<sighs> Good morning, everyone. Larry here at the Farmstead Way. Enjoying a very beautiful morning here on the farmstead before I go to work. I wanted to make a video on something that's been on my heart lately and just enjoy the morning. So past three days I got up and worked out and yesterday I went to do a power workout where just, just big powerful movements and I had like zero energy. So I only worked out for about 20 minutes and gave up and I said tomorrow I'll take a break because I wanted to film a video. And this morning I'm enjoying some, because I ran out, some organic Kroger brand house blend. And in my Peterson St. Patrick's Day pipe, I'm enjoying some good old Peterson early morning pipe. If you've never had this, or if you've never had an English blend, this is a great one to start with. It just tastes like breakfast. So, what do we want to talk about today? I want to talk about truth. From a biblical sense and from a sense of being confident in knowing the truth when you're talking to people that have differenting, <laughs> walnut fell, uh, differences in opinion. What got me started about thinking about this was a couple weeks ago I was working in a factory up north and I got to talking about someone about a topic that I'm pretty passionate about. I'm not going to go into what the subject is because I want this to be a broad spectrum thing. And we had very opposing or opposite viewpoints. And I don't have, I know the truth about the subject. I just don't have enough facts and figures memorized to confidently and boldly enough uh, debate someone with it. I just know the truth of it. I know how I want to deal with it with my family. So I didn't get into it with him. But he was very confident in his opposing viewpoint. And something stirred inside of me that, you know, you get frustration because you just want to argue. And then I had the realization that me convincing this person of what I believe is not going to change the truth of the subject. Now, it might sound pompous or arrogant, but in reality, there is absolute truths. Things that are 100% true, regardless of opinion based on fact. And me trying to convince this person of truth was not going to change the fact that it was still true. And when you get into a debate of someone regarding things that you're passionate about, especially when you know you're right, like I said, that sounds arrogant, but we live in a world of reality, things that are real. <sighs> Opinions can't change that. And a lot of times we get more fired up and we want to be proof that we are right versus we are true. And that's how people get into these crazy arguments, whether it's over biblical stuff or whether it's over political stuff or um, social issues. I think it's more important for us to be confident in what we know to be true than trying to prove that we are right because proving that you are right is not going to change the fact that what you believe is true. And I know if there's any people that are not Christians, they're going to laugh at this video because they're going to think that, oh, you're getting ready to go into a Bible story and you're talking about absolute moral truth. I know this to be true, to this to be reality. And I don't have to try to convince you. All I have to do is tell you the truth. And I thought this was really interesting, uh, this uh, passage of scripture that I want to read to you, where it talks about how Jesus dealt with this. And this is Jesus before Pilate. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter into the governor's headquarters, so they would not be defiled 
but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. He didn't want to deal with it. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. Here's where it gets interesting. So Pilate entered into his headquarters again and called Jesus and said before him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Jesus doesn't immediately start off rambling about the things that he's done. He answers a question with a question. Are you saying this on your own accord? Or did others tell this to you about me? That is so extremely, extremely important when it comes to figuring out what you believe and what you know to be true. Did you figure this out on your own because you sat and pondered it, looked at everything and came to this own decision? Or did you just listen to what everyone else told you about me? Now there's just so many things and it's so hard to figure out because the way the media is and just the way people are, and they gossip, and so many people are willing to play the game of telephone and just listen to the ramblings of others and not seek truth for themselves. And then they get these half-formed opinions that by the time that even reaches them, it's not even true. The facts and figures have been so skewed that it's nowhere even near the original statements. Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, and this is what he had done. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not of this world. So he pretty much tells them that uh, later on you find out that, you know, he asks them, you know, so are you a king? And Jesus answered, you say that I am a king for this purpose I was born. And for this purpose, I have come into the world to bear witness of the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And it's just such an interesting navigation of conversation. In a roundabout way, Jesus talks to Pilate about who he is. First and foremost, to show that Jesus was not just some ideological, rebellious, political lunatic that just made up a bunch of stuff and had a bunch of followers and disciples that were willing to go and do all this stuff. You know, if you'd think of any political leader when they get captured or any sort of coup happens, you have a strong band of followers that are willing to storm the castle to go get their leader back. And none of the disciples did that. And Pilate says, you know, so are you a king? And then she says, you say that I'm a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world. That's the gospel. He tells him the truth. To bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. This is really interesting. So, you know, Pilate was a Roman. He believed in Mars, 
Jupiter, all of the Roman gods that they paid tribute to, that they had statues and stuff built. And this is what's interesting. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. And Pilate says to him, what is truth? Instead of opening his mouth, he wanted to hear what Jesus had to say. Now, Scripture doesn't say if Jesus answered back. I would like to think that Jesus answered to Pilate and said exactly what he told to Nicodemus. That, you know, in John chapter 3, that... For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What is truth? And then after that, after he had said this, he went back outside of the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. You have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried again, not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber, or Barabbas, as it says in Passion of the Christ, which is so much funner to say than Barabbas. There's something to be said about this on both sides, from Pilate's side and from Jesus' side. When you know the truth, just speak the truth. Don't waver in the truth. Be bold and confident in it, and don't be moved. When you come across someone that has a difference in opinion to you, don't go spouting off and mouthing off what you know. Ask them what they know. Ask them what they think truth is. Because they'll either find out that what they believe is based on what others would say about them, or whether or not it's something they came to realize on their own. On their own accord. You see, when I got into this little conversation with this guy at this factory up north... I could have tried spouting off what others have said, but I just looked at him and smiled and sort of pseudoed, being like, yeah, because I didn't want to get into it. But it's because I was confident in the truth. I was confident that what I believe is probably truer than what this other man believes. But I'd rather just be confident in what I know to be true than try to prove that I'm right. Because all it would do is turn everything into a knock-down, drag-out battle of half-memorized facts, you know, very poorly strung together, mixed in with hot-blooded emotion that goes nowhere except gets everyone pissed off at each other. <laughs> and no one benefits from that. Now you gotta think. Pilate was a Roman, like I said before, Jesus was Jesus. Very different worldviews, especially since Pilate grew up in the Roman Empire. Whoop, I dropped my lighter, sorry. Pilate grew up in the Roman Empire, Jesus grew up in peasant Israel. But they listened to each other. Jesus asked him if he had come to this revelation on his own, or did he just listen to the hearsay? Pilate didn't argue, and he asked him what is truth before spouting off all his Roman doctrine. So whenever you get into a conversation with someone that has an opposing viewpoint, just listen. You might learn something. You might find out that either you're you know, more right than you thought, or you're very wrong compared to what you thought. And that way people will listen to each other instead of just argue. And people will understand one another and might come to know truth. So hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, this is a kind of a weighty, deep subject for some 
podunk hillbilly out in the middle of nowhere. But I just want to discuss that with you and hopefully it helps you to think a little bit more before you open your mouth and say something foolish. I know it's going to help me out. So I'm going to finish the rest of this bite, get ready to go to my job for the day and just enjoy this fine, beautiful morning. You all take it easy. Like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. If you have any things that you would like me to talk about or see, drop a comment below. Y'all have a blessed day.